Hey, welcome to Madhouse Magazine Radio Hour, live from Asbury Park. And my guest tonight, again, Mike and Mike, hey. Mystery Mike, Asbury Park, King of Asbury Park now. <laughs> the King and, of Asbury uh, Park. And Maccioli, yes, he's been here for three days, and he's named himself King of Asbury Park. So right. He's been here as long <laughs> as Springsteen's been here. He's been here forever. Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> so, yes, tonight we have another amazing show, nothing but biggies on the final farewell season. We're doing T-Rex, of course. Mark Bolin with his classic album from 1971, Electric, Electric Warrior. Yeah. Want to say it in unison? <laughs> awesome. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about. You know what came out today that I want to talk about? No. Well, anyway, I, had, I found a, a fact that I want to discuss. Are, are you a fan of fast food? Do you eat fast food often? No, or, not often. Regularly? No, not regularly. Well, I'm a connoisseur of fast food, actually. So the fact is, if you eat fast food regularly, mm. you average 12 pubic hairs per year that you ingest into your body. What do you think of that? <laughs> what do you get? I don't know. I'm kind of. Where is this coming? That is from? a Seriously. known fact. I heard it today. Wow. And He's on the, Reuters. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Seriously. That Bill de Blasio came on to have a press conference and he said um, if you, if you ingest go to the fast food on a regular basis, you end up eating 12 pub- pubic hairs per year. So that's how you so want to open the show, right? Yes, that's Great. absolutely. Wow. That is absolutely. That was thought about. How is I it, wanted like, to start this, the show. Is it predominantly like towards like Taco nope, Bell? Nope, just said fast food in general. fast food in general. Fast food in general. So for wow. those of you that are still with us. Continue. Don't you think that they should be made to then wear, like, you know how they have to wear a hair net? And if they have a beard, they need a beer net. So right. shouldn't they have a pubic hair net that they should have to wear as well? That's right. nice. You always got to remember that, you know, you don't mess with the people who make your food. Exactly. That's, That's very true. It. So there you have it. <laughs> All the news not fit for print. So anyway, what I wanted to start the show off with was the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees came out for yes, this year. Sure. That's and true. And it's always a sensitive issue, and it riles me up, and me and Mike have arguments about it, and debates, and you too. So once again, we're going to go through the list, and we're going to lose our minds. So are you ready to hear the nominees, and then we're going to talk about them. You ready? I'm ready. Yes. Or should I name one and we should discuss them as we go through? One yeah, at a time. I think do we're going to do that. Time. All right. Yeah. Not the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees. Not there in yet. They're just the nominees for... Number one. Is this 2018 or 2019? 18. 18. Yeah, because 18 is almost over. It's got to be 19. Well, they already elected 19, right? Or, or 18. Yeah, so this is going to be for 19. <clears throat> 19. So, all right. First band on the list, MC5. I am 100% behind that. <laughs> They should have been in 25, 25 years, years ago. ago. They Amazing. should have been in the first list. Revolutionary. Badass. Me and Mike just saw them two weeks ago. Still incredible on their 50th anniversary yeah. tour. Is that where MC, is that so where MC Hammer got his name? Yes. He <laughs> yes. was actually uh, the bass player's son. Mm. So uh, there you go. Illegitimate. Uh, yeah. How about <laughs> this? Def Leppard. I'm giving a big thumbs down to Def Leppard. Yeah. What do you say about this, uh, Padre? Thumbs, thumbs down. Because they're that. very successful yeah, yeah. and they've had a lot of hits, but it's that hair band crap that Bubble I can't accept. And oh wait, I need to preface this too that maybe I would give more, you know, uh, say that they should be in if other bands that are not in were in. So okay. maybe should I name the list of bands that are not in and yes. then go crazy? Let's do that. That's first. what we should That's do. That's what we're going to we'll do. Go crazy, and this so. is why I'm going to say. F. Def Leppard because number one, T. Rex is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And that's so if T. Rex is not in, Def Leppard's not in. Yep. There you go. Bad Company featuring Paul Rogers, one of the greatest <clears throat> singers of exactly. all time. Tin Lizzy or Thin Lizzy, as you might say. Tin Whisper. If you're from <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> yes, where I actually am from. Thin Lizzy's not in there. So you then you can't have these bands in. Alice in Chains, Doobie Brothers, Ice Cube, Jay Giles, Giles. Ozzy Osbourne is not in there. Black Sabbath is, but not Ozzy. Okay. B-52s, Duran Duran, Pat Benatar, The Runaways, Motorhead oh, is yeah. not in. Jane's exactly. Addiction. Now, this one was shocking. It, it, I literally buckled to my knees when I heard this. Peter Frampton is not in the Yeah, Rock that Roll doesn't make any sense, exactly. Because Frampton comes alive. Like, it's exactly. It's a huge you know, album. That, it's like, it's so it. influ- and it's not when, that it's influential. It's just it like embodies the 70s. Exactly. Right. It really does. 
Everyone owns that album. Yes. Everyone if has you it. don't think you have it, go look in your basement. I bet yeah. you'll find it there. Or your, or your parents. <laughs> right. And yeah. then, you know, of course, they've overlooked punk a lot. So just to name one, Black Flag, a hardcore band featuring Henry Rollins Black is Flag, not there. Black Flag, the Dead Boys. Like, right. All of these punk bands are not in there. I'm sure Dead Kennedys are not in Bad there. Bad Brains made it last year, did they? I don't know. Eh, I forget. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who yeah. I think. I kind of remember. I feel like they made it in. Really? Yeah. I remember them maybe being nominated. I don't know. We'll have to Google that on Bad the break. Bad Brains should be in. All right. Joe Cock is not in. Replacements. Exactly. New York Dolls is not in. Exactly. Who's this? Johnny Winter is not in. And millions of others. Jethro Tull is not in, which is shocking to mm. me. I agree. Uh, completely shocking to me. The Replacements are in. Are, are they? Unless they know. got in recently, they were not in this this thing. I checked. I just quickly checked which bands weren't I, in. I got to check and that I too. Cross yeah. referenced uh, from last year, so this is pretty much up to date. But the so. Runaways too, like that's so important. That's exactly. like that's the first girl punk band, right? Like, and we're gonna we're gonna talk all about that too. So all hmm. right. So now he said MC Five Def Leppard cannot be in unless these bands before them are in. Devo, I say goes in. I am a hundred percent behind. I'm Devo. down with that. Mm-hmm. Their, now, their cover of Satisfaction is one of my all-time <laughs> favorites. It's, it's right, really they good. Were, they were they very were cool, like so original. They were see, original. See, that's like, the Weezer thing. actually like totally was influenced. By oh, I can see Diva. that 100%. Absolutely. Now, that's the key thing. You mentioned this earlier as we were discussing off-camera. Origina- originality is the most amazing thing in the world. You know how hard it is to be original in this world? It's almost Extreme. impossible. It's impossible. So, right, and Devo was an original. So now the next guy is John Prine, who I don't even know. I, I never love heard of this John guy. Prine. What does he do? What's oh. your favorite John Prine song, Padron? I don't know. Christmas <laughs> in Prison. That's your coke right there. Really? Christmas in Prison is one of my favorite really? John Prine Really? What does Prine he do? Song. Like, what's his story? He's like a folks. He's like a folkie. He's like a folk guy. Like, really? Well, like some real, yeah, he's like a I like Leonard Cohen type guy. All. John really? Prine, yeah, because of my uncle, I actually love John Prine. He was okay. really great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. One of my favorite Christmas songs is Christmas in Prison. Didn't the Pixies it do that? It was Christmas in prison. <laughs> I thought really... the Pixies did that song. No, they didn't do that. No, no. No. All right, it's the really next good. one, Roxy Music. Love Roxy. I Love think Roxy they should go Music. In. They should Very totally influential go in. in the um, new wave. glam, glam and new, new wave. wave scene. Now, the next one's very controversial. Stevie Nicks. Now, I'm going to say she should go in as part of Fleetwood Mac, but Stevie Nicks, really? Really? No. Like, Edge of I love Stevie and Nicks stuff and like that. She's got no. a couple good songs. Her solo she's got records a lot of good are good. Songs, and she's Stop very... dragging your heart. Like, that. She's. Ah. Well, that's the one. I, I guess we have to put her in. She's Stevie Nicks. All right. Yeah. Next one, I'm behind 100%. Todd Rundgren. I'm down with Genius. That. Yeah. Genius. You don't yes. throw the word genius around that often, do you, Mike? You no. say it for me. You say it for Todd Rundgren. Right. And that's about that's it. it. But he know? could produce. Yeah. Engineer, he could do, he could write, do anything. Play every single instrument exactly. that there is. And Ray's Liv Tyler, as he, as <laughs> if he, she was around. All right. And he plays the flugelhorn even, too. Yeah, exactly. So, well, yeah. uh, like Chuck Mann, you know? Farm Aid. What do you call it? Uh, <laughs> this is. A big festival. Did, did, didn't he start I don't festival? know any big festival he started. I no, I didn't we'll do any. Up, no, nah, all right, we'll he get produced. Back to you on he that. produced the New York Dolls though, and he produced Meatloaf, Meatloaf and yeah, a million other bands. Yeah. So, um, all right, next on the list is LL Cool J. <clears throat> now, see, here we go. We bypassed all these rock stars and we went to uh, rap, which is not acceptable. That you can't say Tin Lizzy can't go in, but LL Cool J can go in. Well, here's you know, my, here's because NWA and uh, who. Uh, Public Enemy went in, I believe, and they deserve it. I love them, and they deserve it, but not yet. Well, here's my thing, that if possibly, like, BT or whatever has their own, like, you know, R&B Hall of Fame or 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 Rap rap Hall of Fame, Fame, would they allow Aerosmith to be in the Rap Hall of Fame? they would not. They would not. So that's why I really don't like the fact that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame recognizes R&B, rap, and other genres as if they were rock and roll. See, and that's the main it's problem. It's all disjointed. Nobody knows what this rock and roll Hall of Fame is. Right. Nobody knows who's voting, who does what. It's all uh, very 
inconsistent, and we well, don't know. No, they're all friends, and they all know each other. Yeah, so like it's, it's like a popular. John Wena or Jan Wena, whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, well, it's almost like the Academy Awards. They're, everybody who's on the Academy is already involved in the industry itself. Yeah. So, like, they are going to vote for their friends and whoever. It's all a political thing. So, therefore. Screw them all. Yeah. Well, all right. So, I'm saying thumbs down on LL Cool J until everybody else here, and then we'll revisit. New York Dolls. Next, craft work. Now, everyone says Kraftwerk is genius, and I think I should like Kraftwerk, but I don't really know any Kraftwerk songs at all, and I think they're very influential. A lot of people mention Kraftwerk, but I don't know any Kraftwerk songs. You know any Kraftwerk mm-hmm. songs? You? Nope. No, not so, off the top of my head. All right. Well, we'll put them in, like, in a different category, influences or something, but I don't know any Kraftwerk songs. Next, Janet Jackson. Same thing as LL Cool J. There's no way Janet Jackson is getting in before B-52s or Peter Frampton or any of these people. Screw them. Now, get ready for this one. There might be a fist fight here, Padron. You better get ready. Oh, boy. Next band is Radiohead. <laughs> I'm giving it two thumbs down. <laughs> two thumbs yeah. up from me. <laughs> this See, is these guys, I will, favorite honestly, band no, is Radiohead. It's one of, one of my favorite and bands. I is Radiohead. only like one song. I Because you're out of your mind. I've heard one song besides Creep. I've never heard another song. Because you haven't given them and a chance. And they're weird looking. Uh, uh, and they're fan, the guys but weird they're looking. musicians. Like, you should actually listen to this. I, uh, like, like I might Dan. You just said everything. I love like, Steely Dan. Like, replace Radiohead with Steely Dan. Everything you just said, like, fits. Well, except for the 10,000 great songs that Steely Dan has and the one great song No, there's Radio not has. one great song. <laughs> oh, my God. Creep, God, Creep no. is the only song you guys I know. Are out of your Radio mind. An Kid, taste. Ki- oh yeah. my God, Bar- Kid A, Police, OK Computer, Pablo okay Honey. Computer, it's so Pablo they're Honey all really the good. Debut, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. No, and amazing. never heard good, another song besides uh, Creep. So you're gonna have to. We we will go to a Radiohead show. All right. Yeah. Then we'll see. Didn't they release an album for free on online or something? Yeah. Exactly. Because like I say, if Allison Chains is not in from this time period, Radio does not. Radio Head does not deserve to be okay. in. I, I'm sure uh, Pearl Jam is in. Um, yeah. I guess Soundgarden. I'm not even sure if they're in. I think Soundgarden. I know uh, uh, Smashing sure. Pumpkins is not in. So. Radio Head's very original. I'll give them that. They're very original, very talented. Um, yeah. But they're they're just not my taste. Of it's yeah. it's music. kind of artistic rock though. It's yeah. not like it's not yeah. for the masses. I'll admit that. But right, like well, they're an yeah. amazing band. Well, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't see it. Padrone. Uh, nah, do you so, like Pink Floyd though? No, I love Pink. So Floyd. then you should give big... Radiohead a chance. They're like a '90s Pink. Floyd, yeah. it, like, except that, for that. yeah, good. no good songs. I totally disagree. <laughs> Listen to the whole Kid A album. All right, like, I'm gonna have to. to this is. I'm gonna come back. Listen to OK Computer. Episode, Listen to Kid A. He has not listened to any of these albums. No, so he's just being he's been a cocky expect, fuck. I expect Bleep. the music to come to me. That's why I don't believe in I gotta go find music. No, music, music finds, finds me. You. Exactly, right. good yeah. music finds me. I've never needed to go any of these other bands I named. Their music found me. I don't need well, to go search it. Because of friends like me, I will introduce you All more right. to that. Well, yeah, I, will, They're pretty good. I will apologize here next show if I listen and I Jane's like Addiction, it. definitely on the list. Yes. Yeah. Next band is one of my favorite bands in the 90s, 90s, Rage Against the Machine. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely love them. They only have Tom a couple Rowe albums. Tom genius. Yes. Who's more original than them? You know, and yep. Tom Morello's guitar playing absolutely deserve to be world. in. Yeah. Next, Rufus featuring Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Now, they had a lot of great songs in the but 70s Prince and wrote stuff. a lot of their hits. Mm-hmm. Prince wasn't even born yet. These this were the is, 70s. Are what you are you kidding? talking about? No, you, sweet Thing, Chaka Khan. That's Rufus actually, and Chaka Khan, that's who they're talking about. It doesn't about. matter. And that was, tell me something good. After that, That though, was the early 70s. Still, Rufus and Chaka Khan, all their Rufus hits. Rufus died in 1974. Chacha was no, in a band? <laughs> Chaka Khan. Oh. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. So Chaka Rufus, Khan. like I said, the little known fact, he was shot robbing a 7-Eleven in 1974 in nope. Detroit, Michigan. Wow. Wow. Uh, I just made that up, but <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> what are you what? talking about? <laughs> All right, next two bands. Well, that's the next one. The Cure. They absolutely deserve it. Yeah, they deserve it. You know, every teenage girl in the 90s uh, cried themselves it. to sleep every that's night. It's a Pesh Mode and The Cure. Exactly. Yeah. I wonder yeah. what the Pesh Mode status is. I don't even know. Yeah. So anyway, and Single. then the next band, The Zombies. I don't really know. Like, they had like I kind of like hit. some of their songs, yeah. but a lot of people were influenced by them too. A lot of people mm. talked about, you know, and loved them. Okay. So Black Flag, I'm saying put definitely. them in. Zombies are, you know, so old that, uh, you know, yeah, let yeah. them let them go in. 
But everyone else I mentioned who's not in absolutely deserves to be in. How about the Winter Brothers instead of Johnny? Edgar both and Johnny. Both of them should, they should be both in. Be exactly. In. So, Edgar and Johnny. Yep. That, I'm down with that. All right. So, so now before we play, take a break and play some music, we're going right. to have to read a Madhouse Magazine story, of absolutely. course. Ooh, and part. this is Hall of Fame night, so we're going to read Hall of Fame stories. And here's the first one wow. from last year. These are classic stories, by the way. Mm-hmm. Steve Miller arrested for defecating on Rock Hall of Fame. And it was written by Billy Mack. And here you go. Steve Miller was arrested for moving his bowels. Now, before I even finish this, you know he had trouble when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He was actually inducted, and he still was treated like crap by the Hall of Fame. And he went on Howard Stern going crazy. So, you know, some of this is based on facts. So, Steve Miller was arrested for moving his bowels on the steps of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. Miller was inducted to the Rock Hall of Fame last year and was vocal about his distaste for the way he was treated. After the induction, Miller called the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame a private boys club full of effing gangsters and crooks. Miller told Howard Stern that he's planning to investigate the organization. It's going to get better. I'm going to get these guys, the Rocker screamed. They're going to be sorry that they treated all these people this way. Apparently, Miller got his revenge. When asked for comment, Jan Wenner, editor of Rolling Stone magazine and head of the Rock Hall of Fame, said, What the F is wrong with this guy? He craps on the steps of the Hall of Fame. I'm going to pick up his turds, gift wrap them, and send them to his mother. If he wants a war, I'll give him a war. (laughs) Miller was booked and released by Cleveland police, but his banned for life from the Rock Hall of Fame and his subscription to Rolling Stone magazine was canceled. There you have so it. So he left a Cleveland steamer. Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, steamer. Yes. So there you have it. Now, so. we are going to take a break now and play some songs. Let's go out with uh, T-Rex on their oh, first hit, actually. Yeah. Ride a White Swan Ooh, and yes. then Queen Bitch by David Bowie. Mm. It is a glam night, a glam Hall of Fame night. And we'll be right back. Manos Magazine, Radio Hour, 474 The Mix. That's great. Yep. Hey, welcome back, Madhouse Magazine Radio Hour. You just heard Ride a White Swan by T Rex and Queen Bitch by David Bowie. Now, that's an original voice right there. David Bowie? No. Well, T Rex. Oh, yeah, they're both. both. And this is it. You know, we're playing a lot of glam tonight, and we're okay. going to see who came first. So, um, what should we talk about? Oh, let's, well, let's actually, talk like, about, before we get into T-Rex and glam, we have to address Mike Padron's mood for the night, <laughs> because he seems what? to be bringing our show down and our heads down. No. That, uh, and I also smile, want to Mike, address smile. that yeah. last week, after last week's show, that Padron was all, all high and mighty and all up and in a great mood. And he said, next time, next time you guys come here, we're going to have champagne. We're going to have uh, Miller Caviar, High Life. Mid- we're going to have Life, three sushi, different kinds of pizza. Services, Remember? Yeah. He said three different kinds That's of pizza, true. right? And all this stuff he promised to have for us next time. Then the next day, he texted and said, oh, by the way, if you guys want to come back, you better bring your own stuff B-Y-O-B. because I'm not giving you anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that was right after, too, he smashed all the light bulbs, too. I did. That he was out of control. So well, because the last song on the album we were covering was shattered. So I just <laughs> dropped him, and there you go. so he shattered so his reputation. I think yeah. now, I think that's his uh, subdued mo- mood today because yes. he was so hyper last time. So he has to rein yeah. it in. Yeah, I do. And, I want uh, exactly. His manager Lights. spoke to him, I believe. <laughs> they they pulled him aside. He's been hitting yeah. the gym. <laughs> 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 kind of some support group meetings and exactly. uh, it's all good yeah. yeah all right so now let's get back to the show here and t-rex electric warrior released september 24th 1971 and i'm going to say it once again as i'm going to do for every show that if humans survive another 10 billion years and we make touch with aliens and they produce music no one or nothing is ever going to produce a work of art better than this album right here this it's is awesome. it this is not. I'm not saying this is the greatest album ever recorded, but no one will make an album better than this for the rest of your life, my life, and exactly. the rest of human civilization. It's special. It's yes. like a painting. So I just wanted to say that, you know. And Greta Van Fleet will not have an album better than this. No. Justin Bieber, nobody. Uh, name a country singer. Uh, Luke Bryan will not have an album better than this. So there you go. Kenny have. Chesney. 
<laughs> so anyway, let's go through the history here. Mark Bowen, his real name. Would you like to tell us this? Mark Feld, Phil. born in England, September 30th, 1947. His parents were Phyllis and Sid. And of course, he was influenced by everybody of the time. Elvis, Eddie Cochran, Gene Vincent, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, all this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. So I'm not even going to go through his whole life in the early 60s there. We're going to start right off at Tyrannosaurus Rex. That was one of his first uh, successful bands, which it was really just like an acoustic duo, you know, like hippie right. psychedelia, him playing the acoustic and singing. This guy, Steve Took, or Took, or however Took. you say it, mm-hmm. and uh, he's playing the bongos and singing background, and they actually had some minor success here that you know who the producer was and who signed them and all of this, who had something in, very in common with David Bowie. Dave. Tony Visconti. Tony Visconti. Very good. Mm-hmm. Mike Padron is yeah. a king of trivia. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, they made uh, a bunch of albums during this time. Three albums, four singles. They flirted with the charts, reaching as high as number 15 in England, of course. America I wanted nothing to do with them. We're going to talk about that later. Well, that pa- Maccioli yeah. mentioned that before, too. So, then, in 1969, did you know this? I didn't know this until I read this today. Bowen published his first and only book of poetry entitled The Warlock of Love. Some critics dismissed it as self-indulgence. It was full of uh, Bowen's florid prose and wordplay, but it sold 40,000 copies in 69, became one of Britain's best-selling books of poetry. Well, that. that's because it was the UK, and they were just <laughs> all in love with him. <laughs> that's true. He that. was the darling of the UK at that uh-huh. point. He really was. He was the new David Bowie. No, he was... Bowie before Bowie was Bowie. Well, nope. that's the thing. He that's got banned it. is like actually like ripping off Bowie on that's certain songs argument. and stuff like that. I like, disagree with that. That's the argument. I disagree with that. So we're yep. going to get into this now. So T-Rex, they became T-Rex. They dropped Tyrannosaurus Rex and they became T-Rex. They went electric, got a full band, mm-hmm. got rid of that other guy, took. He got arrested for drugs and everything. Right. So they said, forget that. The single that we just played, Ride the White Swan, came out. That was a single that changed his life and career. Peaked in early 1971 at number two. You believe that? And wow. this is directly from... They only the, had one number one song, right? That's not true. I got a whole list of shit here really? to tell you, right? Wow. So, and the b- beginning of Glam, I researched this thoroughly. In the book of Genesis 16.1 <laughs> clearly states, the beginning of Glam can be traced directly to T-Rex's appearance on the UK TV show Top of the Pops, Pops, March 1971. Okay. Right. That wearing glitter and satins... T-Rex performed the second UK top 10 hit and first UK number one hit, Hot Love. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the independent, is uh, some UK... Uh, a lot of people argue thing. because they saw the New York Dolls. That's when they started doing their thing. Not, they weren't around in 71. So Good the point. independent states that Bowen's appearance on Top of the Pops permitted a generation of teeny boppers to begin playing with the idea of a androg- androgyny. So now I researched this thoroughly once again too. Bowie was messing around and stuff, but he, uh, Ziggy Stardust came out after this, and uh, New York Dolls came out after this. And I personally believe that based on this, I didn't really give him all this credit before I did all this research today. Mm -hmm. But after researching this, I believe he started, without a doubt, glam rock. That he didn't start David Bowie. David Bowie he still had ideas. a career. And mm-hmm. that they were kind of friends, but a right. friendly rival, rivalry. But he and wrote a song for him, kind of. Like, you know, Mott the Hoople, you know, all the young dudes. There's a total reference towards T-Rex where he gives him honor. Oh, what? Uh, What's yeah. the honor? I don't even know this. What did he we say? We still got T-Rex. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Just Mark yeah. Bowen and T-Rex. They were the first one. He actually had glitter on his face. Yes. Yeah. You know, so. Sequin and, costumes. You know, and, like, and, and he looked just like the perfect rock star of the time. You he know, was. It was just, you yeah. know, awesome. You know, so, you know, let's let's move on. A lot of people just what. because, like, everybody only knows, like, certain. They're like bang a gong. You play right, that. Right, everybody right. knows that. But I'm like Jeepster. And, like, you, you go into, like, you know, Cosmic Dancer. And, like, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's like they don't understand like how important he was to the uk oh the uk whereas here we were more into like grand funk railroad and stuff like that like it was a different time different place but still the same thing going on he was more influential here than he was successful exactly because the the punk 
like movement. Right. And then yeah. he, yeah, absolutely. So let's say Electric Warrior, this album that we're talking about, it went to number one in the UK. You know what it reached in the US? Number 32. 30 something, yeah. 32. Ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. So in the UK, they had 10 top five singles, four number ones in the UK. And the best they ever did with a single in the U.S. was Get It On, Bang A Gong, peaked at number 10 in the U.S. It's a great song. So there you see, that's a tremendous song, of like, course. No, like, for cool instance, lick. like, growing up, mm-hmm. I, I never understood why people like, like T-Rex. Because any time I heard it, it was Bang A Gong on 104.3. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, yeah, my God. This is like, yeah. what the, I was like, what else have they done? Why is this a, <laughs> an important band? Yeah. And I wish 104.3, if you're listening... They should play Jeepster. Yeah, play some yeah. other stuff. I think guys. nowadays, you like know, yeah, let's people open people's minds a little bit. Yeah. You know, so I bet uh, Radiohead actually did a cover of one of their songs because a lot of bands did. Everybody, twentieth century boy, a lot of people covered. Everybody that one. covered that. So, yeah. so back at this time in the UK, T Rex uh, record sales accounted for six percent of total British domestic record sale. It's the impressive. band was reportedly selling one hundred thousand records a day. That is sick. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. And that that uh, they coined a phrase back then. It was called uh, T Rex to see that uh, <laughs> around the world, mostly in UK, but you know, it still occurred here that at the T Rex concerts, that the girls were screaming the whole time, like it was Beatlemania back in you know the early sixties. Now I gotta say, girls are crazy. <laughs> that the way they act you think about this we never really thought about this the Beatles back in the 60s you saw those things Shea Stadium the girls are hysterical crying screaming the entire show they don't listen to the show at all they scream the entire time have you ever done that at a show that's <laughs> true how far was Shea Stadium from your house very you. close how, very close how far I don't know the exact distance, but... Um, you said you, you were there it? screaming with all the other girls I, watching the Beatles? I wasn't uh, even born he at the time, alive, but I would like but... to. I would like to have been. You were and... in Vietnam, though, you said. Yes. <laughs> you were in the shit? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they uh, they were huge, huge, huge at then this time. Then time travels. So, so, so I'm saying you've never experience that right that you were at a concert you loved it so much you just had to scream and cry the entire time yeah and this is why girls are crazy so um let's, <laughs> <laughs> but let's it's good to be a rock star right yeah let's talk more about the album now that um the What's packaging the and the artwork do you know who took this picture it was oh. Kieran Spud Murphy wow. took it at a T-Rex concert at the Albert Hall in Nottingham on May 14th 1971 cool and that uh, the art design group Hypnosis uh, did this crazy looking picture out of it. All so right. it's really yep. cool. It's a real pick. Absolutely. Yeah. So cool. black and gold. Let's talk about the songs on this now. You ready? Yeah. Mambo Sun, Cosmic Dancer, Jeepster, Love Cosmic Dancer, Monolith, Lean Woman Blues, Get It On, Planet mm. Queen, Girl, The Motivator, Life's a Gas, and Rip Off. Mm. You know, every song on here is amazing. So you should go check this album out. It's an incredible album. Yeah. You have any uh, memories of this album? Oh, geez. No, it's (laughs) it's a great album. It really is. You got to listen to it from start to finish. Uh, Every song is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Jeepster and and, and all these other car songs. Uh, Mark Bolin never drove a car. That's Actually. true. We're yeah. going to get that. Don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah. Mike loves getting ahead of himself. But he has, this is where you come and play. Mm-hmm. When did Mark Bolin and T-Rex play Asbury Park? Yeah, we've been waiting. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You're, You're Mr. The Asbury now. foremost authority oh. on uh, who played when, where. I checked my mailbox. It's not in there. <laughs> 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 so, all right. Well, did they play Asbury Park? Well, I don't Dancers know. Like I, I think they did. I'm sorry. Everyone That's your favorite song? Yeah, it's my favorite song. Cosmic Dance so is mine too, yeah. Is it really? You yeah. know, it's really amazing to hear, to hear his son um, play that song acoustically. Oh, you've done that? You've heard that? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah, oh, because you his son's name was uh, Roland Bolin. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and he does That's that. awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he does that song. It's you can't cool. get any cooler than that. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, I think we should take another break, play some songs, and then we're going to yeah. discuss the history of glam, who influenced who and when, and we'll look up some dates and times and see if my research is correct. My vote's poison. 
But <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were absolutely influenced by T-Rex. We're going to name everybody who was influenced by T-Rex. Yeah, so pretty much everybody. Let's play some more T-Rex. We're going to play Jeepster That's by right. T-Rex. Then we're going to play Cherry Bomb by The Runaways. Of course, influenced by T-Rex, Joan Jett, all that stuff. We'll be right back. Madhouse Magazine, Radio Hour, 474, The Mix. For your love. Hey, welcome back. Madhouse Magazine Radio Hour. That was Jeepster by T-Rex and Cherry Bomb by The Runaways. Mm. Now we're going to talk about the influence. No, no, we actually have to finish his life up here. That, um, of course, uh, Mark Bolin and T-Rex, they had huge success, but he uh, fell into the pitfalls of rock and roll stardom. He was the ultimate rock star, the rock god, the teen idol. Guys wanted to be him. Girls wanted to sleep with him. The story of Padron's life. And <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, he fell into drugs and alcohol and he was hanging around with stars and he got, he got Tony Visconti mad at him because he was treating him like crap. So he quit. And, you know, it all was like coming down and he was cheating on his wife with his background singer, Gloria Jones, exactly. who he ended up, his wife left him and he married Gloria Jones. And it's very controversial at the time. Gloria Jones was a black lady and she had a hit with the song Tainted Love back very in true. the day. So there you go. He ended up marrying Gloria Jones, I believe, and had a baby with her called Roland Bolin, as Roland we discussed Bolin. before. I, I wonder where Roland Bolin is now. He's still playing music. All right. Did he ever play at the Wonder Bar in Asbury Park? <laughs> what do you or the say? Brighton Bar? <laughs> I do not know. All right. So we're going to have to look up Roland Bolin. I would like to see him. That would yeah. be very interesting. Um, so now, as life went on, you know, he continued, but uh, he fell off the charts a little bit at the end there. But he got his life back together after the baby was born. He stopped doing drugs, got fit, started doing albums again. And he ended up having his own TV show at the end of his career there. And uh, the final show, you knew who was a guest on his final show? It was kind of like oh, an, it was an after-school show for kids, you know, but he would introduce really? music, have rock stars on. And I don't know what else they did. I never saw the show. I never heard of it. I've never heard of it. And it was show. just called Mark. Yep. And um, the last show, was David Bowie yep. and Bolin as they were about to do a song that was live and he fell off the stage and you can see David Bowie laughing at him <laughs> and they just they could it was live so they couldn't cut it they just had to keep going so then um, <laughs> it was just a, like a few days after that live show or maybe that same night that him and his wife Gloria Jones went out to celebrate or you know they were having dinner drinks whatever but then on the ride home Gloria was driving because Padron why wasn't Mark Bolin not driving. He didn't have a license. He, he never drive. drove. Never, he didn't, ever drove. Yeah, he, he was concerned about life. it because he didn't want to crash and yeah. die. So he said, let me trust others to drive me around. And it turned out to get him in the end because yeah. on the way home that night, they were going over some bridge and uh, yeah, they crashed. Bridge and yes, they went off the road into a tree and uh, she, was. she was injured. He died. Very sad. It was on uh, September 16th, 1977, at the age of 29. Yeah, he was just about to turn 30. Yes. Isn't that very sad? Yeah. So, I was thinking about that, though. You know, that wouldn't you like to have uh, that as a souvenir? I would, if I had like millions of dollars, I would buy all crazy souvenirs like that that I could. You know, of all like rock stars, I would buy. Because I saw at one point that they had his clothing that he was wearing. Right, right. And that there was like being auctioned off. And the same thing when I saw John Lennon's glasses with the blood on it that Yoko put on the album cover. I would like to buy all that creepy, weird stuff. I'm kind of like that too. Yeah. Yeah. My drone? Want to chip in? I'm a morbid collector. Yeah. Yeah. So he had a great life, great career. Well, I don't know about great life. If you die at 29, it can't be that great of a life. It's very no, young no, to be dying. He'll always be remembered. Though. Exactly. But Young-o. still, um, yeah, he was uh, huge. So now let, let's talk about the glam. Who started what? Who influenced who? And I'm going on record saying uh, Mark Bowen, T-Rex, started the glam movement. And it influenced everybody else because you notice not only Bowie and the New York Dolls of course and you had all these gla- uh, glitter and glam bands like Gary Glitter Roxy Music right. Susie Gary Quattro Glitter, I don't know if I would consider that though that was gl- his name's Glitter I know How can so it not be? dead so like not like rock and roll or fucking that's so bad <sighs> he's cursing on the show he's oh, so I'm angry <laughs> I'm so angry so anyway Susie no. Quattro Gary right? Glitter so oh. listen to the way Susie Quattro then influenced the Runaways of course with Joan Jett and uh, what's the other the girl who plays the guitar 
uh, Lita the Ford. Other girl. Lita Ford. Yeah, <laughs> Iggy Pop was That's even influenced cut. like this. The Rolling Stones, Lou Reed, all major stars at the time. Well, Roxy, then, I agree. They were influenced. There are mm-hmm. certain bands that I think were influenced, but like honestly, Bowie was his own thing. Yeah, but. The glitter used, part of it. I'm saying part of it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Part Every it. major band at the time took some of this glitter. The Stones were wearing glitter and eye makeup. Very uh, true. Queen Very started true. doing it. Elton John, mm-hmm. Alice Cooper, all major stars would have been great without uh, Rock. Uh, what's his name? Mark Bolin. But they were so, influenced by him. I with agree the glam that Mark movement. Bolin might be actually the center point yes. of the glam movement. Absolutely. 100% yeah. unequivocally zip zip. And then, at the end of his career, he was a huge influencer on punk. That on uh, the last tour that he did, the Dead Boys opened up. No, not sorry. No. Let me retract that. It was the Damned in England who yes. opened up for him. And, and that, the Smiths were influenced by him. Of course. There's so many other All bands. All New Wave, Goth, Bauhaus, yeah. Adamant. Adamant. Who exactly. else? Prince and Lenny Kravitz were unequivocally uh, influenced by him. Absolutely. Yep. Name someone who wasn't influenced by him. I I dare you to put drone. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yeah, Frank Sinatra was never influenced by him. Well, I think that in the late seventies, well <laughs> that he uh, did do a video wearing gl- uh, glitter on his eyes. Did he not? <laughs> and he did a cover of Jeepster. You know, <laughs> you ever Jeepster in my mind? <laughs> That's that. That would hey. be a good Madhouse magazine. Yes, boom, absolutely. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what he did. Exactly. So everybody after 1971 was influenced in one way or another by Mark Bolin and T-Rex, whether you know it or not. Whether you know so it or not. So give him props. And, and yeah. the place that he uh, crashed, it's actually a monument now. That like the tree there, it's like Jim Morrison's grave area. Exactly. That people leave. There's a plaque there, and people go visit and stuff. Somewhere in England, I don't even know. Mm. I don't even know where England is, let alone this place. So I doubt if I'll <laughs> ever find this. But um, I'm sure you can look it up and go if you want to. Wouldn't that be? I would a, like a, to a, wouldn't that be an awesome tour someday? I would actually go see that. That we do that, like we go to Europe and we go to Jim Morrison's grave, and then we go to this place, and we go well, to that's like France. All, and then we'd have to, it's all in Europe. You, yeah, it's very play. easy. They're all close together. You can walk from uh, England to uh, France. You just walk there in an hour. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna skateboard all the way through the channel. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Skateboard across skateboard Europe. Is- It'd be fantastic. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So that is that. Now, before we play some more uh, music and wrap it up, do you have anything else anybody wants to say before I wrap this up, before we read another Hall of Fame story? Um, ACDC should be in the Hall of Fame. They're not in. I'm pretty sure they're in. I didn't see their name not in. Roxy Music. Yeah, we already named them. Okay. Kiss is in there already, right? Yeah, MC they just Fi- got in. But for the longest time, Black Sabbath wasn't even in. So. MC5 needs to be in. That's very important to me. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, they're moving on up. That's the good thing about it. MC5 and Todd Rundgren have been dismissed for so long. Those two. Now they're moving up. But for some reason, they're completely against uh, Jethro Tull, which is so ridiculous. Just for Aqualung alone, alone, they should be in there. So, Jan Wena, I'm coming for you. Thick as a brick. I'm exactly. Sorry. So good. So anyway, let's read another classic Rock and Roll Hall of Fame story from Madhouse Magazine, the annals of Madhouse Magazine. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, back in 2017. The guy who wrote this story was called Lee Fook. Fook. Steve. Guy's a beast. (laughs) Steve Perry hurls racial insults, insults at New Journey singer. So 2017 started out to be a big year for the band Journey. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced that Journey will be inducted into the hall this year. The band and original frontman Steve Perry parted ways 20 years ago and have not had much contact since. With the news of the Hall of Fame induction, Journey and Steve Perry sat down to discuss a possible reunion. The talks did not go well at all, as a clearly intoxicated Steve Perry started making racially insensitive jokes at the expense of new singer Arnell Pineda. First, Perry came out wearing a Chinese waiter costume, complete with round horn glasses and buck teeth, singing to Pineda, Me Chinese, me play joke, me put pee-pee in your coke. Pineda explained that he is Filipino and not Chinese, but the belligerent Perry did not hear it as he broke into song with 
Don't stop breathing. This was obviously Perry's attempt to belittle the way Pineda sings the journey hit Don't Stop Believing. The final straw came as Perry started it again with his bad Asian accent saying, Confucius say, he who go to bed with itchy behind wake up with smelly finger. Guitarist Neil Schoen had enough and wrestled Perry to the ground. No word on whether or not the band will continue with this plan to reunite for a song at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction in April. There you have it. All the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame news not fit for print. Let's hear it for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. Boo! Jan Wenner, you will not have our respect until all of these bands are in there. Where's Ben Fong Torres? Did you put him in a grave? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty good. Uh, reference there. Michael definitely knows not who that guy is. All right, it's time to smell the album. Name our favorite song. Ah, oh, this is so good, Mike. Really? I'm going to go with, uh, what song do I like the best off of there? Oh, that's very good. Um, I, I kind of like, I love Get It On, but it's been, it's just, I oh, have to go like back dancing. to the time, the first time I ever heard it. I love Jeepster. I love Mambo Sun. I don't know. Cosmic it's so dance. hard to put. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Mambo Sun then. There you go. Just to be different. You know who played on this album too? There's a lot of famous people on here. Um, let's see who was it Mark Bolin he played on this album <laughs> Mickey Finn Mickey Finn and uh, that's about it never heard oh the guy Flo and Eddie from Zappa's band and the Turtles they did backing vocals on this and uh, that's about it yeah but Cosmic Dancer so good oh and look at this Phil McCracken played can you read that Flugelhorn <laughs> I'm not making it up. Exactly. There is a flugelhorn on there, but his name is not Hugh McCracken. Phil McCracken. Phil McCracken. Burt Collins. Who's your favorite uh, flugelhorn player of all time, Maccioli? Oh, come on. Chuck Mangione. Exactly. The, man. the only flugelhorn player that matters. All right. So that's it, man. Yeah. We've uh, completed the show here. Fantastic. Because I put the out here. You want to hold yeah, it? Yeah, I'll yeah, hold it. You hold it. Yeah. See, I'm better at this. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of my face. Uh-huh. Come on. You're blocking me. So now that's it. I got nothing else to report except that you know, once again, uh, we talked about this last week with Lenny Kravitz, that if you want to be a rock star, try to be cool like Mark Bolin. Exactly. That he had it all. He had the looks, the music, the writing, everything. You can't be a fat lead singer. Mm-hmm. That's it. You want to be well, you fat, can if you, you got to be in the background. Like certain people can He wasn't be fat. fat, really, though. Meatloaf was fat. There's That's like, different. You want to keep going? If you like, got to be fat, fat, you got to be really singers. fat, though. Meatloaf, like, Meatloaf wore it well. And John he had, Popper? Nah, John Popper sucks. There's I hate a lot John of Popper. fat lead singers. I'm just saying. <laughs> Barry, I'm uh, really Barry White. Barry <laughs> White, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, most cases, 99% of the people who we love and adore had it all. Going back from Elvis, you had to have the look as well as the music. Elvis was a fat lead singer. Nah, yes, till he was. the end he of was his a life. Fat lead singer, and so was Jim Morrison. They're both Jim fat Jim Morrison lead singers. was Too a fat, god. How dare he say fat, that? Fat, lumpy lead singer. How singers. dare you say that? And <laughs> <laughs> every one of Die these before artists, you get fat and lumpy. <laughs> all of these artists were amazing, and they had it all. They were, they're amazing. Jimi Hendrix. You don't even have to be handsome, you just have to have a look, you know? True. It helps if you're handsome too, but you know, what are you going to do? So anyway, we are wrapping the show up now, and we're going to go out playing a Mambo Sun by T-Rex and Maccioli's <laughs> favorite song and band, Rock and Roll Part 2 by Gary, Gary Glitter. Gary yes, Glitter. And you do like them. Let's talk about Gary Glitter. That like, he, he ran into some of troubles in later. Have you heard about this, Padrone? You know about his troubles? He's a pedophile. Yeah, confiscated his computers. And more than that, they confiscated his junk because he was going on trips to uh, Bangkok to uh, visit little children, I heard. Uh, I Not think. to feed the children. But <laughs> yeah. He was else. feeding children yeah, something There was else. something going on. What's the story with that? Did he die? Did he get arrested? We're going to have to follow up. Padron, you're in charge of follow up. Well, he likes Gary Glitter. Yeah, I, you're the one who brought I Gary like, Glitter. Yeah, but Gary you're Glitter the follow up guy. So let me read the news. You follow up. So for next week, people are waiting. They got to know what happened to Gary Glenn. Mike loves the so Hay song. You hey. write this up. Yeah, that's it. Rock and Roll Part 2. <laughs> uh, the classic song. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they play that at every sporting event you ever go to. So it's a huge song. And you all love and it. And we're it going to play. It, it went number one at Bangkok, though. And they it still did. play it. It went number one all over the place. 
Every NFL uh, arena. I want to say, do you know what happened to La- after last week's show? Mike ended up in a trunk of a car in Bangkok because he, he answered an ad. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Answered an ad. <laughs> That's why he looks so disheveled. <laughs> he can't show his face. <laughs> I'm going to throw up yeah, live throw up. on the show now. It's going to happen. <laughs> ah, that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> ah, what, we have to cut some What was Mike that one show being, uh, he didn't show up? Was he at GloryCon? No. Yes. Yeah, GloryCon. <laughs> up in the city. <laughs> With Julius Squeezer. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to have wow. to end the show now. Like I said, we're going to play Mambo Son by T-Rex, <laughs> Rock and Roll Part 2 by Gary Glitter, and the Artist of the Month. Madhouse Magazine, Radio Hour. Check us out, madhousemagazine.com. All the news not fit for print. And check us out on this farewell tour here. We're going to be doing a lot of exciting, crazy stuff. And hopefully Mike will, Padron will be feeling better next week. He, yeah. He confessed to us during He's the break. He's been drinking a lot of cranberry juice had, last yes, I heard. He had uh, ITU. Is that how you say it? <laughs> what, <laughs> UTI. U-I-T-U, it's a like UTI. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> no, ITU. Today, I, before we, before we close this know. up, you know Kaidi Tang? The, she's like an uh, Asian newscaster. Married to Maurice Povich. No, that's Connie Chung, Connie I believe. <laughs> Kaidi Tung is similar Connie to Tung? that. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know what happened to her? I oh. just found out today. She had an exploded colon. Wow. Wow. How does that happen? How does that happen? And how do you stay alive? She was in the hospital for quite a while. She just posted that she's recovering from it. Indian food? So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Could have been White Castle, Indian food, the pubic hair in the fast food. Impossible. Or some uh, bad meat in the can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, she was doing something she shouldn't be doing. Remember that. Oh, that's right. So, there you go. That's it. The show is over. Let's Good. hear it for us. Yeah. <laughs> Before the show goes in the toilet anymore, we better wrap it up. See you next Literally. time. Madass Magazine.